Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you how you can play your Nintendo Switch when it's docked on more than one TV in your house. So at the moment I've just got it set up just as an example of what you need just down on the floor. But at the end of the video I'm going to show you actually working in my house on the bedrooms upstairs and a TV out the back. Now what you have to do is basically out of the back of the switch you've got a, a HDMI output so from the output you basically need to split that signal so you need to get yourself one of these. These are not expensive I got this quite a few years ago now for £30 I believe they're as cheap as £20 now or you can even get 4K versions for I think between £20 and £30 and what this does is whatever signal goes into the input it will just mirror onto the other output. So this is a 1 in 4 out. You can get a 1 in 8 out, but obviously they're more expensive. And uh, if you've got a lot of money to spend, you can get fancy HDMI matrixes, but they do cost a lot of money, but they are much more intelligent and they do numerous things, like numerous inputs to numerous outputs at the same time. Now this will not allow you to watch or play different things at the same time. All it's doing is mirroring the image. So for example, if I'm playing Zelda here, then it will be the same upstairs or whatever other room that you run the cables to. So all, all that it is, is instead of having to take your switch out of the dock and then playing on the little handheld screen, if you like playing on the bigger TVs, then all it does is if somebody then comes in here and wants to use this TV, it gives you an option to take your controllers to a different room and then carry on playing in that other room. That's all it does. Now you're not limited by the picture because the picture works really well. The thing that you're limited by is the Bluetooth controllers because unfortunately, as you start to move further and further away from the switch, the controllers start to drop out. So the Pro Controller might, works much far further than the Joy-Cons. What you'll find is when you put the Joy-Cons in the grip or even if they're not in the grip, the left one will cut out really quickly and then followed by this one here and then followed by the Pro Controller. So the Pro Controller does seem to have the strongest Bluetooth signal. Now, that's going to limit you to the games you want to play. It's fine if you want to play Zelda because you can be using the Pro Controller no problem. But let's say if you wanted to play 1-2 Switch, that game there, which is a Joy-Con game where you do numerous things on your Joy-Con, then obviously you're only going to be able to play that when you're very near to the Switch. So this will be fine if, for example, you live in a small house or maybe a new build house with plasterboard walls, like thin walls and stuff. But if you're living in an old house with thick lava and plaster ceilings or you're living in a big house then this video isn't really going to be much use for you because these do run out of signal relatively quickly. Now I'm just going to uh, quickly show you, just go around the house just to show you where they do run out of signal. So as you can see here the Pro Controller is on player one, these two are on player two. So we're going to go upstairs to one of the bedrooms where I want it working. Right, so I want it working on this TV here, this one here, and as you can see, they are still both in sync. There you go, the blue one's just gone. So in this room, I'm not going to be able to play Joy-Con related games, but I will be able to play it using the Pro Controller, so things like Zelda will be fine. There you go, the blue one's gone completely, but the right-hand one is still just about keeping in sync. Right, let's go into this back bedroom now, which is the other room I want it working in. There we go, so I want it working on this TV here, and as you can see, they're both still in sync, but again, the Joy-Cons are relevant now because the blue one's not in sync, and if I try to get the blue one back in sync, it won't sync up, because we're too far from the switch. Okay, let's move around this room a bit, see if we can get the right-hand one to disconnect. No, okay. So before you do any of this work, you are going to have to walk around your house with your controllers to see what you get. If it's cutting out, there's no point in doing this at all because you're not going to be able to play anything. But if you find that it's staying in sync in all the rooms that you want to be able to play the Switch in, then this video should be of use. Right, let's go back down. Now the other room I wanted to work in is the back room. Let's just get this one synced up again. Okay, so that's synced up again because I'm by the main room. Now I know for a fact they're gonna disconnect here 
because I want it to work in the back room, but this is an extension. There you go, that one's gone already. So this was extended after the house was built, so it's an external wall, and you can see as soon as I go into the back room now, the signal's gone. So basically, I've got no way of playing it in this room here without an extra dock. So I'm gonna to have to get a second dock to be able to play it in this room. But at least I don't have to get two docks for upstairs because I can just use the, the cabling that's already in the house for that. Now, to, uh, to get the signal to the different rooms in the house, you're gonna to have to run HDMI cables to those rooms. Now, that can be a bit of an ordeal depending on uh, if you've got you know, depending on the structure of your house. But if you've already got network wire in your house, so for example, if you've already got Cat5e or Cat6 cable laid everywhere, then what you can do is you can get these little adapters, which is HDMI to RJ45 adapters, which is your network wiring. So if you have a look there, that's RX for receive, and this one is transmit. So what you would do is you would put this one in the dock, and then you would put this one, the other end, into your TV equipment, and you would run a cable, just a normal network cable, between the two of them. Now, this won't fit in the back of the dock because it's a little bit too big, so what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to run a HDMI cable out of the dock, put a little coupler on it, you know, a little uh, HDMI female to female coupler, and then plug that into the coupler. And then you can run your Cat6 or Cat5e cable between the two. Now, I haven't had much success with these. I can only get them to work over about 15 meters, but I did buy very cheap ones off eBay. I think these were about 12 pounds. I also got these two here, and these were only about, I think these were about four pounds, so very cheap. And that's for the pair, that's 12 pound for the pair and four pound for the pair. Now the difference between them is, with this one, you can just run it down one cable. With these two, you have to run it down two cables. So you have to actually have two cables going in between these adapters here to get them to work. But again, I only found that they worked up to about 15 meters. I have done a separate video on that, so you can hunt that one down if you wanna watch it. Since doing the video, people have told me that if you use shielded cable, it works much better. And also, remember, I did get very cheap ones. If you were willing to spend 40 or 50 pound, then you can get ones that are rated up to 50 meters and uh, apparently they do work well. These ones I think were supposed to be rated to 50 meters or 30 meters, but as I say, I didn't get it out of it, but uh, I, uh, it might have just been the interference and stuff in my house, so you might get better results. But anyway, so basically you have to run HDMI cables or these things around your house to get the signal through. Now, with HDMI and with these as well, it does transmit the picture and the sound. So if I was to If I was to go here, you can hear that the sound's coming through here and it's also coming through the big TV up there. So if I put that one on mute, you can hear it's just working here now. Take it off mute and it's working on both of them. And I don't notice any lag at all when I'm playing it. I'm not the best gamer and maybe it doesn't really matter on games like Zelda, maybe it will be more important in the future on other games, but I don't notice any problems playing it at all. So let me just show you the basic setup here because it will make more sense when I've got it laid out and then what I will do is I will actually set it up in my house and then I will show you it working at the end. So what we have is we have the original Nintendo HDMI lead coming out of the Nintendo Switch, which is this one here, and it goes into this little splitter. That's just a one in. So if you look there, it says input. It's just one in and two out. Now, the reason I've done this is because this is going to live under my stairs because I've got all the cables in my house going to my understairs cupboard. So I want to be able to have one lead going into the TV and then the other lead. So one of these white leads goes up into the TV and then the other white lead goes around and it goes into the input of this splitter here. So if you have a look here, I've got one input and four outputs. And then in the output, I've got this black cable that feeds this monitor with speakers down here. So that's all it is. So now I can run another three cables from here to the other parts of the house. Or for example, you can run these little adapters and then use Cat5e cable going between them and plug this one into another TV. So that's all it is. So it's quite straightforward and the good thing about all this setup here is it is just really reliable. You just plug it in 
and it just works. So now I'm going to set up my house and then come back to the video and let's see how it's all working. Okay, so we're all done now and I've got a Nintendo Switch here still working on this TV in the main room and then from out the back I've got the little black HDMI cable which goes into this one in two out splitter and from this splitter I've got one of the white cables feeding the TV itself and then the other white cable goes all the way through my house wiring into the understairs cupboard so let me just show you that now Right, okay, so this is all the the wiring, and what happens is it's this top splitter that I've got turned on at the moment. So the white cable that I just showed you is this cable here. So this feeds the input, and then at the moment I've got three outputs connected. So I've got kitchen, one going to the kitchen, one going to one of the bedrooms, and another one going to another bedroom. I've still got an empty port here, so I can always have it work in another room if I wish. Okay, so let's go and see it working now in the rooms. Right, so if we go to this one here, I'm just going to use the Pro Controller because as we know, we already having problems with the Joy-Con upstairs. So if you're thinking about using the Joy-Cons everywhere, you really need to make sure they are working first because this left one doesn't have much range at all. Right, okay, so let's just go to Zelda. And if you have a look, when I'm playing it, I can't notice any problems with lag or anything. Right, let's go see it working in the other rooms. As you can hear that the sound is coming through there perfectly as well. Now in the kitchen, I'm gonna be on the limits of the controller working. So you can see it's there. Okay, so that's that one working there. And let's go upstairs. Go into this bedroom here. Again, we're still in sync. And if you have a look at it there, it's up there again, the sound working and picture working. And again, I can't notice any problems with any lag or anything. Right, okay, and let's check the other bedroom. And again, we've got it working up here as well. And there's no loss in the picture either. It will be 1080 on all of them as well. Okay, so that's the ones working there. Now for the back room, I've had to actually install a second dock because the signal from the controllers, unfortunately, like I mentioned earlier, doesn't get that far. So for this one, I have to bring the actual Nintendo Switch tablet itself. So let's just pop that out there. Let's bring everything. Now, a good thing about this is, I mean, by far the best way is just to have a dock everywhere. But the good thing about this is that it means you can use your Joy-Con controller again. So here we go, a second dock. Plug it in there like so. And if you have a look up there, it will come on here. And then for this one, you can go back to using your Joy-Con 
in its grip. Yeah. So if you've got the money to spend, you know, the easiest option is just to get docks and put them all around the house. But if you've already got network wiring around the house and you've already got HMI cables running around the house, and this is another option for you to be able to do it. Right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if this helps you out, and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.